Thank you. Is that working? Okay. So thank you. Welcome. Um, I am Juana, and uh, before I'm presenting uh, myself, how smart and beautiful I am, and <laughs> how much I achieved, uh, I want to tell you a fact. You will all agree. It's 4.30 in the afternoon. Everyone would argue that. <laughs> Another fact, <laughs> at 4.30 afternoon, energy might be a little so-and-so. So the first thing, the first um, activity that I wanted to um, propose you is to ensure that you have a neighbor <laughs> next to you. So you're exactly, that you're not alone. And it, it will be nice if you are in a pair, uh, so at the, your table. Yeah, your pair, yeah. So two, four, six, okay? Now, this topic is called change from the perspective on change, so it's about change. So the first thing I want you to experience is something about change, simple experience. And I invite you to change, this is an exercise I really love, uh, change something on yourself. This is, and I'll give the example because we need to give you the example, don't we? This is something that I wanted to do. <laughs> so change something on yourself. Yeah, change. Okay. Did you did you succeed? Okay. Are you happy with your change? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, now what I invite you, and that was a thing to to have uh, a pair being in pair. Turn to one of your neighbors and change something on her or on him, which means, can we have an, an example? Um, who's some, some of the, the, the people that help me, or some of the, one of the volunteers, can you come and help me? We'll do a demo. Um, can I change, I need to change something on you. Yes, please. You're making me so young. Yeah, I'll be happy. I changed something on him, uh, and you can do the same on me. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yes, tell me what I need. I to don't do. know. You changed something on me. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me. You need to change me, not them. <laughs> what I need do you to want? Change to myself. I need to change you. No, you change me. Okay. You are like Bill Clinton. I can change okay. you. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, that was the demo. So, you turn to your, your neighbor and you change something on him or her. Okay? So, you do it. So, you could change that or whatever you wanted. Please do, please do, please proceed. <laughs> it, don't ask them, go, go and change. Don't ask for permission. And also, don't ask the person to change herself. You go and change. <laughs> I see he, oh. <laughs> so for example, for example, Sita, let's say you want to, to take that. Okay, so that was, I mean, I'm not changing it. He, he needs to die. How, how did this second part of the exercise felt? Okay? It felt okay? That, did it feel, feel okay? So and so. No answer. No answer. Neutralize it. Did it feel awkward? Yes, yes. Yeah. So this is my super short exercise about change and if it is this 
this uh, workshop is kind of the backlog of the takeaways. If there's only one first takeaway is that you can't change someone else. People change themselves. And if you change someone, that is an aggression. <laughs> well, yeah, it feels awkward from the people that is changed, you know, because when I said change something on me, I was like, what will he change? And for, for him, oh my God, what will I change? And it's also a cultural, that's why this is a little bit provoking, it's also a cultural matter, matter in this exercise. What's the le level of my own intimacy space? How that I, I enter in that space? And that is true at the team, organization, and corporate level. So if there's one takeaway from my uh, workshop today is that you can support, if, if you are a change agent, you can support people to change themselves, but you don't change them. <laughs> if, you can, if you can change that, it's more an uh, aggression. <laughs> okay. We go, we, uh, we can start still with me. Oh, now I, I'm pre after that take, first takeaway, presented myself. I'm Juana Junco. I'm coming from France. Uh, I love to the team dynamics and uh, leadership, and I am using uh, systemic constellations and uh, design thinking for collaboration, lots of things. So I, I like to present myself uh, as an agile um, leadership and business DJ that mixes whatever practices make people proud of their outcomes. <laughs> So th this is for me. Now, the second takeaway I'd like to, you to have from here, and I say if after that you don't like the session, you can go, but you have a second takeaway, is that organizations are made of people. And people, what's, what's the quality of all people that are in, in an organization? is that you will, you will agree with me or not, we can argue, they are alive. <laughs> A fact. <laughs> uh, so if they are alive, they are living uh, systems, and because organizations are, are made out of people, organizations are also living systems, like the individuals. And because organizations are living system, and that is uh, my second takeaway, they change like living system. That means they emerge, they, uh, uh, they are born, they grow, they decline, and then die. And the fact is, uh, with the, us as, um, as people and also organization, uh, we have a a bias about that truth, which is it? That we live for, we, we, we believe that we live forever and we act as if we live forever. <laughs> and that's the same case with organization. They act as they, they live forever in the format that they, uh, they, they are in at a certain point. So now, after the second takeaway, <laughs> which is organization of uh, our living systems, um, I would like you to uh, have this first activity, discuss with, uh, at your table, in an agile journey adoption, what do you think is, needs to change first? Two minutes on that. <laughs> yeah, you can write it there. Uh, could have done also a, a cloud, but I prefer that you have a conversation. Just, just have a conversation and then you'll tell me. Two minutes.
OK. It was just the, this is the warm up. <laughs> uh, par, par table, if you can throw at me some uh, words in conclusion. What element? Leadership. Mindset. Opinions. Openness. To become more open, that's what, okay. From those, those table. What? Structure? Okay. New? Did you find something? Open. Okay. So what was already said? Willingness to achieve, to change, the willingness to change. Okay. So this, this was a little bit of a generic question, uh, the uh, theoretical, philosophical. Now, Maybe uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the next question will have another answer. In your professional environments right now, in your organization, either the one that you work with, uh, in or we work with if you're an independent consultant, what is, ne what is needed to, be cha to change first? Maybe it's the same answer, maybe it's another one, another minute or so. Ways of working. Now let's, yeah, uh, let's discuss between uh, with your pair uh, <laughs> for one minute. You can participate if you want. Okay. Okay, w once again, it was really a quick conversation. Um, some answers for each table? Yes? Yourself, okay. <laughs> Thank you for that. What else? Other table? Yeah. <laughs> okay, create psychological safety. On other tables? <laughs> your boss? <laughs> okay. <laughs> what, what's the problem with your boss? <laughs> okay. Uh, other things? Mindsets experience, so going back to the, the first uh, question, yeah? Business agility, so the, 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 uh, the business is being more agile. So you see here, something else from this table? That we, you stick with leadership. The, actually, I was thinking, uh, which is a good question, what's, what it needs to be changed in leadership? Okay, so okay, so the leadership should hold the why of the change. That's okay, okay. So um, this is our sum answers. So you see, there is about mindset that uh, managers also <laughs> lead leadership. Uh, so you see, you we come back to the the same basics and what you. What I observed also that between the two questions, actually, that uh, not exactly the same answers because the first one is a more wishful, <laughs> and the second is more concrete. You know, concretely for for me, what in my what I observe in my organization. So um, now, okay. So all these things that you said you need to change. What's the problem? Sorry? Resistance. 
fear resistance. And why is that? Stepping? Stepping out of the comfort zone is it's a kind of linked of fear because out of the comfort zone is dangerous. But what it's, um, I want to say uh, is there's a balance when we change, there's uh, unbalance be between the decay and the growth of a new system. And the fear is also, and the resistance is normal, and that's, well, it's normal because a, a system doesn't want to decay, as we don't want to get decay. I'm, I'm, I'm not very sure that every, there's a human being that uh, can't wait to become very old. Not sure, we all get old, but I'm not sure that I know anyone that said, oh, I can't wait to be 80. <laughs> <laughs> so, me too, I'm, in, I'm included in all this speech. <laughs> so that's, a, that, that's unbalanced between decay and growth. So, um, having said that, what I wanted to share with you, this is a model that uh, I discovered and I find it so useful, so the idea today is to experience it. Pre I present it, I experience it. It's a model of change that is based on the cycle of life, saying uh, that in, it's called the two loops, just simple as that, two loops, uh, from the Barkana Institute, Margaret Wheelie and Deborah Fries uh, have defined it. I said that at the point in time, there's a dominant system, and that's also in organization, and there is an emergent system, two loops. The one that is dominant, and the another one that emerge and that will bring change because you know we also change continuously I don't know the numbers and I didn't have prepared for that that came to me but you know how how many uh, cells die and are renewed in our body every day there's million I don't more tens of millions I think so um, yeah that's that's at each moment in time, this is what's happening. Uh, so now it's, let's talk to, to, to really embrace change. Let's zoom a little bit on the dominant system. And when you talk about the dominant system, what is, um, can be blurry is where are we in the dominant system? Because we said that as, as, as living system, systems are born, grow, a reef uh, at their peak, decay and die. And when we are in the system, it's very hard to see at what point of the life that system is. And uh, the system that is powerful and it works is what I was saying before, is at the peak, we have this delusional sense of permanence. We were successful. It won't right, so we think that we'll live forever. I told, that's why I was saying we want to live forever and be young and beautiful. If you have a time in your life where you, you thought that you were happiest, we think that we'll stay at that moment forever. And that's what happens with system and society. It's one of the reasons so that society or organization don't want to change, that they are their peak and they think that this will be real and true forever. But at the same time, at that peak zone, while the dominant system has the delusional sense of permanence, there was what's called the pioneer start. Those that see that the system is not right anymore. It's like the Agile Manifesto in 2001. Those were pioneers <laughs> at that time. And normally they are kind of isolated. I don't want to talk for forever. <laughs> um, they are kind of isolated at the beginning. Isolated initiatives that say this system has a problem. They kind of see the starting of the decay. But they are, uh, as a separate voices, and also 
very hard to believe in those voices. They're, um, what starts us to happen is that those pioneers start to connect together. And one, if it's one thing that this model of two loops uh, does, wants to do, is to name those pioneers, connect them together, and then nourish them. So it, it looks, it looks uh, maybe too e uh, very easy, but it's powerful. Name them. Name a movement. A movement without name is it, powerless. Think of Agile if it didn't have a name at all. How would that be successful? So this is, it looks simple, but name them. <laughs> Connect them so they become stronger and nourish them so they, become, uh, they, they can uh, get even stronger. And then there's the emergent, I, oops. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, there's the emergent system that will start to, to grow. So this is the second loop, the emerging loop. Um, normally it should have been uh, emergent. So dominant emergent. Um, what happens to the new system now than here? Well, it doesn't work. Um, with the pioneers right now in that moment. You know, dominant system, the peak, they saw. What's, what is the, the dominant system do, wants, want to do? Exactly. Exactly. Why? Exactly. It's a self-defense. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fear, but actually it's normal. That's, this is really one of my messages is that if you're, you're frustrated that uh, change doesn't happen, is that it's really... Uh, a living system logic. The dominant system sees the pioneers as a threat, and what are they? What in a living system? What does it, does it activate when there's a threat? Defense, immune system. <laughs> so the immune system of of, of dominant uh, system starts to active so they can smash the pioneers. <laughs> and in organization, what, what is blame? It doesn't work. Uh, I said um, fear-driven behavior. It doesn't work in our environment because that, that, that. Uh, too many meetings, whatever, um, whatever uh, arguments it, it, it has. Um, now, after connecting the, um, the pioneers, the idea is to create coherent patterns for the, the new system. First connecting them, and then see what are the patterns, you know, is what those pioneers can have as a common uh, way of working. Scrum was one of them, let's say, a pattern. You know, the first was agile as doing so and so, it, it's true that it was XP, but a lot of initiative. At, at the moment, there's something that happens that it creates coherence. <laughs> and this, the emergent system is uh, more uh, powerful, and they, they are, uh, have patterns, and they have a shared purpose and a cause that makes them stronger. OK? So now, that all, until this was a little bit of theory, now I would like to make this concrete for you because it's a, really a model. Um, and as I said, that for, to, to reinforce the new emergent system, there are three things that are to, in this model to be done. Name, connect, and nourish. And the exercise I'm inviting you to do, uh, it's an individual exercise, and you have it on the handouts. It's not exercise number one, it's after. 
So you skip exercise on number one that we'll do or not do, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and there's a list of questions. And there are this question, what is the change that you want to see in your organization, in your own environment? Name what's the tribe of pioneers. Who are the, those ones? I mean, how can you help them connect better? And what are the ways that you can nourish them more <laughs> so they don't die as embryos? OK? Is that clear? So what I suggest uh, you yet take three minutes to answer the questions and then five minutes to share uh, with your group, okay? Something like that. Eight minutes total, eight to ten minutes. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, three minutes to capture, five minutes to talk. May add two minutes bonus if necessary. Is that clear? Maybe it's the time to start sharing. The idea of sharing is also to get inspired by other people's idea. Yeah, I think it's, it will be a good time to start sharing with the others what, what were your ideas. 
at a table or all table you do one per one or or per pair. I, I see pairs organ, organized. How, how it's the best for you? Do you want to join another table? It's okay. Oh, oh okay, okay. Yeah. It's, it's the pioneer, pioneers. You talk about the pioneers, those that are all willing to change the system. Yeah. So it's not people that you want that they change. They are already in. They are the change triggers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's that's uh, for for the moment. Yeah. So I hope you had good conversation, uh, and you've got inspired by the ideas of the others. I um, listened a little bit of, of the discussion here. I hope it was clear. The idea is that you name, connect, and nourish the pioneers, those that want to ignite the change, 
So it's not about convincing them. They are already convinced. It, it just need to reinforce them. If not, the dominant system will say, kill, 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 kill. <laughs> OK? So this was the first exorcism for, for, for the pioneers. And that's why I say, if that's another takeaway from this workshop, is this one. If you identify, identify pioneers that want the change in organization, connect them and nourish them. Uh, will we go on? <laughs> yeah. Yes, of course. Yeah. So uh, I think I just pulled out of my notes the fact that you said liberal change. Yeah. And uh, this pioneer, right? Yeah. Sometimes, uh, like in the example of agile, you gave, right? People yeah. are already practicing. Pioneer, yeah. So yeah. That's something. Yeah. Sometimes, like the pioneer are not practicing anything, but they just have a common sense. Yeah. Right? But would you call them pioneers? So because they have to consider an evolved one. Absolutely, you can, yeah, they have a common intent. And they're doing little things. Or they feel that they can't do it. That's why you want, need to nourish them. They are not, it's like an embryo. They are not um, strong enough yet. But they have that uh, intent. That's also why, if I'm lucky, well, it doesn't work anymore. No, it's, it's this thing that, well, no, I don't want to accept this. This is a Microsoft thing. It's in the middle of presentation, it has absolutely some updates to do or whatever. And then, luckily, it's not there, but um, it, it's working again. Thank you. You're, you're, a, you're my hero. <laughs> uh, actually, I wanted to, to come here back to this slide. Um, what's, I was say, you know, it's creating a shared purpose. I said that intent, they have an intent. If you get, connect them at least to have a, that shared purpose, it's motivating. And it's the same thing with this with a society that we have today. There's all these voices th that are stronger and stronger about the climate change, etc. But when it, it started, it started like, what, what does society d said about them? That they are kind of pirates, that uh, are um, activists, yeah, yeah, activists, illegal. You know, in England, um, the, the, um, the, pe the UK, the people that are activists for climate change, uh, actually, they are trained uh, to how to act when they will be put in jail. <laughs> because as it is stronger, they will yeah, say, they occupy sites, etc. So. The, the system will say, well, they are disruptive, the, the, what, the, their actions are illegal. So one of the training is say, prepare them how to act when they will be charged. <laughs> um, so it's a way to connect. So now, as I said, there are this, uh, there's one form of resistance. I just wanted to have a focus on that. Is when the new emergence system starts to be powerful enough, the, one of the form of the resistance is to copy it. Copy the, uh, copy, uh, the new, but based on the old logic. And hey, we are also uh, doing the same thing. And because I, I used this, uh, uh, this activist for climate change um, that is now stronger and stronger, one of the form of resistance which is copying is the greenwashing. <laughs> Everyone's green. <laughs> and, um, but th those are, the, copy the new, which is not innovation. Innovation, uh, uh, thinking differently is by the pioneers and by in the emergent system. What is said in this model of two loops also, it says that 
this change is a disruptive change, which might not be a good news. Okay. There is no way to say that's, that's the, the, the line, the dotted line there. There's no way to say I will easily step from there. There, there is disrupt that it it needs courage. There's not there's no path between them. It's and it's also because of this uh, the, the this way of behavior as a, uh, as a living system, as the uh, new the pioneers the new system is detected as a virus. <laughs> The dominant system, the old system, will activate its immune system. So there's no dialogue. <laughs> um, OK. And that's the hard moment. And that is the second part of, of the exercise, is that, OK, the, the dominant uh, system uh, grew. It was stewarded. And then it decays after the peak. And this is the, the hardest uh, experience to have, from dominant to dying, from being at the peak of its splendor to decay. But what is, um, what is Im important about decaying system is, and that's a message to pioneers or change agents, is compost what we what life does and we we are very bad as uh, human species <laughs> is at composting <laughs> by the way and that is a, a, a side comment we are the only spe species that creates garbage garbage meaning something that no other life type of life uh, needs to live all other species create something that that is used by other species, but we create garbage. Why, and in our organization also, we forgot to compost. What does composting mean in this? Is taking those old behaviors and see how they can nourish the new one. Because we have this tendency, and pioneers can have this tendency to say, all of that is bad. And that creates even more resistance, of course. <laughs> and what, um, what the, the, the two models loop says for another three actions, so for, for the emergent system and for the pioneers, it was nor, uh, name, nor, um, name connect nourish. And for the dying system, another three actions is Hospice, so hospice the old system, so can, uh, it can die. Uh, so support it to die, compost it, so take what is good to feed the new. And also the third one is illuminate, is illuminate the path so it can be safer for, for the, the people to cross the chasm <laughs> from the old to the new. Um, and what is really very, very important, and one uh, a question, which it's kind of a rhetorical right now, but we'll have another exercise. How can we provide compassion to the dying system? This is something that we forgot. A way to deactivate that immune system is to, um, to provide compassion, which means what? Saying that the, the, the way that the, that system acts is normal mm -hmm. because it wants to stay safe. Or you say that the problem is your manager. In this model, I say, well, that manager, his behavior is normal because it's what he knew that was the success path he had. So this is, so it's part of the dominant system. And, uh, uh, and really, uh, compassion is very important. So, to compassion and hospice, which means uh, support the, the, the smooth 
transition, so smooth, smooth dying of the, the dominant system. Um, I will present you the questions and it will be the second part of the exercise. What actions of compassion toward the people in the dominant system that I believe in that dominant system can you put in place so they can feel less threatened? The second one is to, um, to protect also. What are usually in, in, in the dominant systems and you know, when you're in the transformation, you always have sponsors or people that actually are in the dominant system, don't feel safe enough to be pioneers. Not anyone wants to be Greta Thunberg, <laughs> but there are people that support, uh, pr protect the pioneers. So the, the second question is, who are in the dominant system protectors of the pioneers? Who do you d identify in, in your organization, the, the pioneers? And what are the ways to illuminate the, the path toward the new and you, that can amplify also the pioneer work? So, that, so to create the, the, this new, eventually this new safer engagement. You know, we talk about the psychology uh, safe. So uh, what are the ways? And I think you... I, uh, I invite you to the second exercise. Yeah, sorry. Uh, the second exercise on your hands out. You have this question. And equally, uh, I'll ask you to reflect five minutes on answering these questions and then share and is mutually inspire yourself. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. In the last 20 years, yeah. nothing really changes, don't worry. Yeah. Right? So, I, I'm just thinking, is it because someone did not nourish this pioneer? Or yeah. Or that was just a fad or a, not the right idea for the right time. Or exactly. So I, yeah. How, how do you, I guess my question is, how do you um, distinguish that say, hey, you know, this is the one, right? Mm -hmm. That we should. Oh, that was the first exercise. <laughs> so I'll go back to see how you nourish those pioneers. Now, the, uh, the second exercise is how you support those people that say, we try the transformation, they have the transformation fatigue, or, or it's also uh, an avoid, avoiding behavior. <laughs> no? That we don't change because we know all cha we changed all the time. So, uh, ref I really invite you to reflect on that, uh, and at the end of the, uh, the session, I'll give some answers eventually. Other, but yeah. Yeah. So, so if I understand well, there are different protectors. Yeah. Yes, uh, but now what I invite you is to reflect on your current organization. So no, don't think theoretically, generally. It's in your organization, who can be, you know? So if you have an international organization, think, what do you, who do you identify as protectors? Locally? or mm, at the head office or, 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 or offices, other offices, if you, of head offices in India. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, another five minutes to go.
So I'd, I'd invite you to start sharing so you can get inspired by the others. So I, I hope you had good discussions. And I would like to invite you to a third round uh, of discussion in which the wisdom of the group is at service of one person, <laughs> which means one, of, uh, one in each group can present his or her situation. And then you, you have a big uh, flip chart paper. And that person uh, writes down uh, or with post-its on that, the, the ideas that the others in the group can give him or her so they can nourish their pioneer and can also illuminate and amplify their work so that the people in the dominant system can become willing to engage on the new path. So focus on that. Is, is the instruction clear or not? So you, yeah. 
So one, one person describes the situation, and the others in the group gives her or him ideas to answer that question, to enrich the situation, OK? It's a way to, to so the group is at the service of uh, one person. <laughs> and if we had time, we could do all the people, but uh, pick one <laughs> in your group, OK? That will the, be the gift that the, each group will give that person. Yes. Oh, it's the, the idea is that one of one of you uh, presents it, uh, her or his situation, and both the other two of, of you give them uh, answer suggestions with uh, that second question mainly. How can okay? So it's the gift that you're giving. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where it comes from, but it's nice. <laughs> The idea, the, the idea is to have a map uh, for the person that, uh, for, for, for the one that you are working for. So the idea was that one of you presents the situation and the other helps them, helps him to, to have it. So, and that, the put there with post-it or you write on that map what, are, what were the, the ideas that you've got. That was. Simple. Sorry? Not necessarily like that. It's just the answers to the questions that you, you, you can put ideas on post its uh, like uh, brainstorming, you know? No. <laughs> we'll keep it simple. <laughs>
It's about two minutes left, so even if you didn't finish it, it's okay. Okay, so I, I'm sure I'm sure that you can. I invite you even to continue the discussion outside and give uh, give the the feedback. I, ju I just wanted to, uh, wanted to say how how did it feel to work and give ideas to one of your colleagues? <laughs> yeah. Well, Thank you, Woody. How how was it? How? Yeah. <laughs> yes. What? Yeah. Yes. Of. Pioneer. The pi the pioneer is the one that has initiatives to change is the rebel, the one that says, I don't, would, it, it couldn't be, no matter who, that's what I was giving the examples of Greta Thunberg. She's a 15 year teenager. In terms of legitimacy in politics or uh, science, uh, she had none, but she observed that the dominant system is cracked. So that's what, it's not a role in, in the organization, and thank you for that, that question. Is that person, that is the rebel, <laughs> whatever the role is, yeah, <laughs> that wants to change. But yeah, thank you for that, uh, that question. Okay, so I, I would like to guide you for, uh, from, um, and another uh, set of, of concepts real quick because this is huge and I'm really passionate about. I hope you felt well to either receive ideas from your pairs at table or to be at service of someone. Usually it's, uh, it's quite nice. So what happens is that, as I said, these two loops that are kind, there's no link, they're kind of disruptive. The path, to one system, to another is painful, is, it, and it's chaotic. There's no right way. <laughs> so that's why the, the questions that I ask you are pretty open. I don't tell you do this, this, and this. It's just for the pioneers, name them, connect them, nourish them. For the dominant system, uh, find the protectors, uh, illuminate, and hospice to create, so that's why hospice uh, is really important for me. Compassion and compost. <laughs> Compassion for the people that don't want to change, it's normal, they defend themselves. And compost, recognize that the dying system will also nourish this. There's something good. Look up what is good in the dominant system. <laughs> and sometimes it's hard mainly when we have very strong beliefs. And I, I, I give an example, it's well, the industrial system, uh, you know, the, the uh, petroleum extract industry. That's, it's, it's, a, it, it's a decaying system. And the, this challenging question, what, what is good? How do we compost what the, the system brought in terms of, I don't know, uh, well-being for people? I don't know, I'm not, I don't, want to give uh, answers, but that's the mindset. It's, there's always something good that can nourish the new system. But the, 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 the path is chaotic, and because it's chaotic, it's once again a threat, and, you, and it's, it's hard to go in. 
And uh, yeah, I won't have time to really go through it uh, deeply, and I knew it, but I still wanted to, to uh, present that, that a way to cross this chasm is to, de to de deconstruct our own beliefs. Because pointing to someone else's belief that are wrong is easy. Deconstruct my own beliefs, not that easy. <laughs> and a way that I uh, want to offer it, it's, it's uh, from a model from Dave Gray, it's from the uh, liminal thinking, so thinking at, at the borders, is that uh, it says that reality is at the same point somewhere, and we interact with, with that uh, reality, and then we have an experience. And that experience combined with our relevant needs, because we, each one has needs, so we create a story about it. And that story is our set of assumptions. So we have an experience uh, that answers to some, some needs we have, so we create assumptions. And on that assumption, we create something that is called obvious, our own reality. How is that? It's a little bit theoretical or it's okay? Okay. So that I create my own beliefs. I have an experience, this has happened, so now I know this is true. Um, and what happens also is that if someone else had the same type of experience and same type of needs as me, then we create the uh, collective obvious, and that's what is called um, the self-sealing bubble of beliefs, as shared beliefs, group thinking. Um, and the group thinking is that it's a, it's a set of beliefs of, of one group. And guess what? Other groups have their own self sealed bubble of beliefs. Like pioneers will have the, uh, uh, theirs, dominant system have theirs set of beliefs. And we create here our own reality. It's what is obvious and there's a gap. And the one way to, the, the threshold to set, to pass from the set of beliefs that we have to set of beliefs B is what is called as that liminal space is being aware of this model and deconstruct them. The uh, question always, what is obvious? I'm not entering into details because it's all a process that I have here, but question what is obvious for me. I said, what, what, are, what are the assumptions I'm doing? What are my needs? What is the experience? And this is a way to, to go from the set of beliefs A to the beliefs B. Okay, this is the, the threshold, because when we deconstruct our beliefs, what's happening? What's happening? An, an idea? Sorry, yeah? Yeah, we, we, we don't have any assumptions anymore. And what does that mean? That, sorry? Insecurity, exactly. Void. Chaos, I don't have my references, uh, self-doubt. So, so that's very complicated. It's an awkward, not easy um, place to be. <laughs> and that's also an invite you to compassion and also to self-compassion, <laughs> by the way. Um, so um, what is called as the resilient learning is, is happening in, in the liminal space. And another model I, will, uh, I, I want to share with you because I'm working with this, um, it's the theory U change curve, saying that change doesn't happen in a linear uh, way. I, I'm in at A and I want to be at B. It's more like that. Oops. I'm getting rid of my beliefs. I'm present to reality, you know, the tableau of reality, because I don't have any assumptions, uh, any judgments. It's a hard place, but I don't. And then new behaviors and new ideas emerge. 
and the way that we go to be is like that. We renounce. We, I love to say that you can't bring something new if your space is already packed with stuff. So you need to renounce to something. So that was a, what I wanted really to, oops. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the same thing. Here I'll go. It's a way to say how do we cross that you is in the liminal space. What is my obvious? What are my assumptions? So it's exactly what I've told you about the, on the slide. The needs. What are my needs? How do I fill my needs? And then let's see what things that actually are dangerous, I just said, I, uh, for me, and make me in insecurity, and make me have another type of beliefs. It's also a way to have compassion, saying, hey, I have made the assumption of that needs, maybe the other group or the dominant system had the same needs. Guess what? Just that they have other, uh, made other assumptions. But if we meet there where we have the same needs, then we can construct something together. It's a way, by the way, to, to, uh, to manage conflicts. <laughs> to kind of, so that's, that's a completely other topic. So with that, uh, yes, because it's the last session, a way to go through the, that you, what I wanted to do is to make that exercise number one on your hands out, which is here, and connect to our own body. Real quick exercise, just to end the session and, and experiment uh, transformation. It's called the stuck exercise. It's, are the, it's the same like uh, this one. And think at, at some situation that you might be stuck with. And please, please, if you want to stand, because we need that, if that's OK with you, to stand. I invite you to stand. I invite you to stand. <laughs> it's, it's a more complex exercise, but we, we'll do it individually. And now, think at a situation where you think you're stuck. You don't know how to solve it. You said that, that our body knows, has a lot of, um, of ideas. And try to make uh, what's called a sculpture. Take a posture that, that, is, um, that, that illustrates that stuck. So it's, it's an exercise that invites you to, to put your brain down <laughs> and, and tap to, into other, um, other resources. So ev everyone that has absolutely no stuck, no situation that uh, I can give some of mine? <laughs> OK, so I think of one of mine. And this is, I'm, I'm trying to do a, a demo of that. So, uh, and then have a posture. Right? This is mine. Not with my brain, is what just thinking of it, it's like that. And try to stay with it. Staying in a stuck situation is not sustainable. So stay as long as you can, and then let your body move. It will move. Uh, and we, you'll finish with another one, so let me. So this is my second, and this was for me my second sculpture, the second posture. And what I invite you is to put a word that comes to you without thinking on the first one and on the second one. And that is all. And then we'll tell me if you've got any ideas how to get unstuck afterwards. OK? Is that OK? I'll let you do this exercise. <laughs>
I let you do this exercise for you right now. <laughs> then I will applaud you. Think of it, it's a work with yourself. Stay as long as you can, and then let your body move. And put a, 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 a word on the new posture. Okay, and all of you have a word for the new posture? <laughs> yes? Sorry? Belief? Relief. Okay. Discomfort, the second one? Okay. Uh, so I'm not sure because I really wanted to, you can do it with yourself, you can do it also by, uh, in triads. So three people uh, are together, and the others also give a feedback what they fe felt about, uh, uh, about this. Um, I know it looks aw awkward, but it's, you know, deconstructing our, our beliefs. One of our beliefs is that the uh, body is a taxi for the brain. And actually, it's not true. <laughs> so you have a lot of... Um, a, a lot of uh, information uh, that the body has, and this was a way to invite you at the end, at, at the end of the, the session, to connect with, uh, with another type of change. <laughs> okay, I think this is, wh where, where did I put it? This is kind of all, there's a, uh, uh, there's a minute, um, some minutes left. I wanted to offer you as a conclusion about change this quote that is one of my favorite in saying that all change passes by three phases, the, the stages. The first one, when it's ridiculous, you know, the exercises we've just done, where I say tap in the intelligence of the body. In the, our culture, professional culture, this is ridiculous right now. I've made you do a ridiculous exercise, didn't I? <laughs> the second phase is when it's dangerous, is violently opposed because it's dangerous. You know, it's the dominant system that starts to react because it's dangerous. And the third stage, when it becomes self-evident. Everyone does like that. <laughs> so I just wanted to finish with this. Um, connect with me. I'm doing this type of uh, workshops longer. And uh, if you're interested, uh, please connect with me. And I think we still have some moment for reaction, questions. Uh, uh, violently <laughs> reactions. <laughs> yes, yeah, the mic. So for everyone, I'm not sure if you all understood the last exercise. So what on Ajahn did it was, you know, she did a somatic exercise. In this somatic exercise, what we do is like our memory resides in our body. And what we are actually trying to do is tap into it. Mm -hmm. And our body knows a lot of things, just not just our brains. Mm -hmm. And when we were in an uncomfortable position, I could, uh, like, you know, for an example, we could say, okay, 
in an uncomfortable position, I can say, okay, I am having a lot of challenges for agile transformation in my organization, okay? The body is in an uncomfortable position, you are just thinking of that pain. And once when you are coming into a, another position which you feel is relaxed, okay, at that point of time, your body and your mind will start throwing some ideas, actually, if you put some uh, efforts into it, and you will get a, one or two nice ideas from there. Yeah. So that was actually a very beautiful exercise to, you know, actually... Uh, tap into our own learnings. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. It's true that I, I saw this and I didn't have time really to create the safe space for, for you. That exercise might um, have been awkward, but you have it in the ha handouts, and it's exactly that. Is the body inspire your mind? <laughs> so try to, thank you. Other questions, reactions? Any, any question? Anyone? Thank you all. Anything? Thank Question. you. Question, yeah. Oh, yeah. Last, yeah. last one. In terms of representing the emergent system, yeah. why is there a dip? Because the dominant system also emerged earlier, right? Exactly. But the idea is that uh, is really to, to make them different. Actually, the dominant system was an emergent system. Before, but it's 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 a choice of representation. So we are here now in the dominant system, and you know the dominant system. It's it's a way to represent that it decays. It's it's only that. It's only a way to represent. But you're right. The dominant system was an emergent system before. Yeah. I think there's a question there. Yeah, it's just about uh, experience sharing. This is more of uh, uh, enlightening thoughts for us because uh, what I felt is more from a st uh, structural or non-living perspective only to approach the transformations. But how we connect these things with the living organisms and see it as a living thing, that's a very different perspective I got it from you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Any other question? Any other question? You had a question? No. Okay, thank you. Have a thank nice you. day. We have now time for networking and dinner. Yeah. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your evening. <laughs>